Hi, I'm Harold Bell, and this is the Legends of Inside Sports and the Way We Were. Here on today's show, I want to talk about fake news and fake news reporters. I grew up in the 60s, and I watched the civil rights movement up close and personal. I was able to see the sacrifices by some great men and women to help free us all. And then I look in 2017, how far back we have hustled. And those great men and women must be turning over in their graves. I want to introduce this show by the testimony of my friend out of Baltimore, Maryland, Brother Alvin. So I want you to listen closely to what Brother Alvin has to say, and I'll be right back. Lord, may the words that I speak and the meditation of my heart be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Let me decrease that the God in me may increase, that your will may be done, Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to be a vessel for you. To God be the glory. In Jesus Christ's holy, magnificent name I pray. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. And he has truly been good to me. And because of his grace and mercy, I am poetry. Spoken words spoken will always be words heard. <laughs> I've heard it all before and been there, done that before that. In fact, I'm that fat cat in the back rocking a coat jack. I'm spiritually strapped with a mental knapsack stacked full of poetic maps so trapped minds can make it back. I read, write, and recite insight all night. I'm eternal life seeking, metaphorically speaking. I'm mentally streaking and vocally leaking. I'm poetically peeking into the closet, exposing the skeletons of life. My ink pen bleeds nouns, verbs, and blurbs of absurd curves that separate men from mice. Snitching on your bewitching, mind shook like a surgical knife. Precise like a measuring device. Words splice. So nice. You have to hear it twice. <laughs> Words splice. So nice. You have to hear it twice. I spit about the pit from which I came. Hence, testimony's my name. Simple and plain. Mental pain pours from my brain and falls down on you like rain. Again and again and again. I remain contained in a lane that God sustains. I'm a poetic vessel to praise his holy name. I aim for the souls that's still in the game, that cut against the grain like running backs and backtrack to a lifestyle insane. Back to that house of pain, a place where, where subterranean moles have control over dead souls. A place where trolls chase in and out of holes, hitting pipes, bottles, and bowls. A place where lives are put all whole with no dreams or goals. Because you are deceived to believe that dollar store glitter is gold. But the truth be told, your hands bound the fold. Because only God can fulfill that hole in your soul. I write by candlelight with spiritual insight and recite about God's might. I give thanks and praise just for another day to get it right. See, I have to die daily to self to live. And at night, I fight that same man Jacob fought in Genesis 32, struggling with God and man the way I do. See, I'm that someone you see in your rear view because I'm a verbal reflection of you. There's a reason why there's only one set of footprints in the sand and not two. The blessing is at the end of the storm that you go through. And only God can turn my gray skies to blue. And just for today, I see serenity in my mind's eye view. Many are called, y'all, but the chosen are few. And you ain't got a clue to what God can do. Tadala L says, thanks to the almighty God, cause that's how I roll. My thoughts feed your thoughts like chicken soup for the soul. 
lyrical skill like Gil Scott without the hair on. I'm verbally stretched out on your mental lawn. I'm cold like Freon, a poetic Don Corleone. And I'll spit words till all the words in the dictionary's gone. See, I keep minds lit like oil lanterns at night. I keep hope alive when tragedy strikes. Cause God brought me from out of the darkness and into the light. If it ain't tight, it ain't right. And my bark has bite. It's like riding a bike. So pass the mic to me. Testimony. Because I am poetry. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Alvin. You know, I, when I think about the sacrifices that so many have made, and you look at those in media who are supposed to be reporting the news to us, especially those blacks in black media, they don't have a clue. They are a part of the whole fake news scenario. I just recently received uh, an email from a friend of mine, and uh, he was writing about two Washington Post reporters, Aaron Davis and Peter Jamison. And the email said, Aaron and Peter, I read your article this morning, and I have to say, Aaron, you as a black man in America, have failed as a journalist to hold black politicians accountable and report the truth to citizens, particularly blacks, who have suffered in DC from disproportionate education, housing, and economic development. We know the white reporters and some lackey black reporters in this city don't want to interview black citizens with non-status quo ideas and they try to promote new white gentrified residents who have no clue about DC except taking away black folks' homes and neighborhoods and replacing those black neighborhoods with beer garden, bike lanes, bars, and dog parks for white people as blacks are placed out of the city. Well, one thing, uh, my friend, I, I want to remind you, we don't own any major news outlets. We don't own any. We don't own no CBS, no ABC, NBC, Fox News, CNN. That's, how, that's what controls our image. And we don't have black folks on those shows who are willing to speak up and tell the truth. I mean, you, you just look, just look. That Radio 1 is owned by Comcast. They run the show. They run the show. And then, of course, you got BET. You know that Bob Johnson sold that to another entity. Ebony Magazine and Jet have sold their whole archives to another entity that controls it. Ofer Winfrey is suspect. So we don't have really any place that we can look and get real news. And that's the problem. In Washington, D.C., for example, Mayor Miriam Bowser has awarded city contracts to her white developer friends who have contributed heavily to her re-election campaign. That black people believe Miriam Bowser, like many Black politicians have sold out to the money interest to further her political agenda. For whites, where are the black neighborhoods? Where are the city amenities for black people? You know, sometimes we cannot see the forest for the trees. The role models for Aaron Davis and Peter Jameson at the Washington Post are People like Cortland Malloy, Kobe King, and Eugene Robinson. What do you expect? Bowser has made a deal with the White House as it relates to Peter Nushin as a new police chief for Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. All of these so-called black folks writing for the Post are part of the fake news agenda in media. They don't 
want to know the truth because they are not allowed to write the truth. Miriam Bowles and the city council are sending the wrong message to our children, both black and white. The message is this. You can be a poster boy for domestic violence by physically abusing your wife and girlfriends. You can be found lying drunk on the streets of the nation's capital with your gun on your side. You can illegally arrest hundreds of protesting demonstrators and cost the city billions of dollars. You can abuse your police powers by removing evidence from the department's warehouse property room to be used against you in a court of law, and at the end of the day, you can be appointed chief of police in the nation's capital, which is the capital of the world. Something is wrong with this picture, and something is wrong with that message for our children. They are definitely not making children first. President Donald Trump is right. There is a lot of fake news out there. I had written column for the now popular sports blog Bleacher Report owned by CBS Television. When they first kicked off the blog, my blog stories started to get thousands of hits suddenly. They wanted to censor me because they could not prove I knew what I was talking about when I wrote stories about their heroes, I guess, John Thompson, Sugar Ray Leonard, uh, Jim Brown, Don King. Uh, they, they they censored me. You know what I said? They could take that job and and shove it because I wasn't getting paid. What well, I'm gonna let somebody censor me? You're not even paying. I wouldn't even let you censor me if you were paying me. I have written a half a dozen freelance columns for the Washington Post and dozens more for the Afro American newspaper. The Washington Post and the Afro were run by Catherine. Graham and her son Donald, and Francis Murphy ran the Afro-American newspaper in Washington, D.C. You know, when I think about reporters at the Washington Post, I think about my buddy uh, Bill Rasberg. Bill was from Miss Mississippi, uh, much like uh, Corlin Malloy, and he knew absolutely nothing about uh, the black community until me and Petey Green, yes, uh, the legendary Petey Green, and I, we took him under our wing. Bill eventually won a Pulitzer Prize. Cortland Malloy and Kobe King are in career survival mode. They won't crack an egg if they stepped on one. They are playing safe so that they can maintain their sweet positions. I remember Kobe King had an interview with Mayor Gray uh, when he was running, uh, we were running for re-election, and uh, he called me for the 411 as it related to the $700,000 slush fund and the real deal on the partnership formed between Vince and Suleiman Brown during the campaign. I gave him the names of Vince's bagmen, Vernon Hawkins and Lorraine Green, and guess what? He didn't write a thing. It had something to do with him and Vince being Dunbar alumni. Because he told me, he said, Harold, Vince ain't right. So why didn't you write something about it? You know, this is fake news and fake news reporters. That's the best example. There are a lot of folks who are not aware that they forced Vince out of the Department of Human Services for sexual harassment back in the 90s. We forget easy in this community. When Yvette Alexander replaced Vince Gray as a Ward 7 City Councilwoman, Councilwoman she, just, she was just as bad as he was. Neither one did anything to improve the plight of their constituency. The Washington Post was the pa paper who kidnapped my tag inside sports. While I was having their sports writers, Dave Dupree, Michael Wilborn, David Alger, Kevin Blackstone, Brian Rosen, Leonard Shapiro, Tom Callahan, and sports editor George Solomon. They were all guests and contributors on Inside Sports before their 15 minutes of fame. John Welsh, a writer in the style section of the newspaper, took my title, Inside Sports, with the blessing of the Grams, Catherine and her son Donald, to New York City and started Inside Sports 
the magazine. It folded after a couple of years. It failed to translate the popularity of Inside Sports, the radio talk show, into written word. The Washington Post now owns the copyrights to my title. How low can you go? But that is what fake news is all about, deception. The ESPN television format is my radio format. That's what John Welsh went after the Inside Sports magazine folded and took that same format over there and enhanced ESPN. You know, the powers to be are trying their best to keep the origin of Inside Sports out of the history of sports media in America. And the fake sports news uh, writers and reporters are going along to get along. But what else is new? That's what we do. So I just want you to remember, you know, fake news is out there. You've got to be careful about what you read, how you read it, and uh, how much information you take in that you think you might believe. Until next time, I'm Harold Bell for the Legends of Inside Sports, and I want you to remember that every black face you see is not your brother, and every white face you see is not your enemy. You can color me gone.